Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2015. This is Silicon Angle's flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Join my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Dominic Orr, who's the president of Aruba Networks, now part of HP. Um, Welcome to theCUBE, I'm a big fan of your company. You guys Thank grew you. out of really the, the birth of Wi-Fi, pre-Wi-Fi in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the RF, first of all the telecom bust happened, yep. and out of that came wireless ISPs, you know, broadband connectivity, and Wi-Fi. And you know, cafes were developing, now it's everywhere, kids <laughs> want the Wi-Fi, it's now everywhere. So it had its bumps, but you guys brought it to the table. Congratulations Thank on you. the acquisition from by HP. And welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So what brings HP and Aruba together? Obviously, enterprise grade Wi-Fi um, in stadiums, in companies. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy for everyone who knows Wi-Fi. So, but why HP? So if you look at the, um, the history, uh, how Aruba was founded, we were found 90 days after Intel introduced the Centrino platform. Recall, right? Uh, we figured that if uh, with the Wi-Fi chipset on the motherboard of every laptop, that uh, the the workplace is going to be transformed because people is going to start taking the work away from the desk. And the moment you cut the Ethernet cord, the big incumbent's advantage of 15 years of R&D poop go, goes away, right? And um, so now, fast forward um, a, a decade, when Centrino happened, Wi-Fi was intended to be supplementing Ethernet. But now with 11AC, with gigabit Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is actually faster than Ethernet, uh, and it goes to a further distance than Ethernet, and uh, we think that there's a transformation going to happen in the campus and the all access network, that wireless is not going to be supplementing wi wireless is going to be wireless first, and, and Ethernet will supplement uh, Wi-Fi, and the combination of HP and Aruba is really is um, a very strong validation of the next generation access network is going to be. You're making my friend Bob Metcalf very sad right now. I remember I asked Bob in the in the mid '90s. I said, well, you know, wireless or wired? He said, wired will always be better than wireless. What? Now, this, of course, it was the mid '90s. So you got to give him a break on the horizon. But what changed to flip that dynamic? Uh, uh, okay. So first of all, uh, I'm a, um, a strong admirer. Uh, of Bob, Who I don't it? think. Who is it? Right? Yeah, <laughs> but, well, he shouldn't be set because basically, <laughs> if you look at the history of Ethernet, we did it over coaxial cable, then twisted pair, shielded twisted pair, and shielded twisted pair over fiber, single mode, multiple mode. You know, even I look at Wi-Fi is just Ethernet over air, so it's still Ethernet. It's just a different medium. And but in, in fact, we went through all the way from share media to switch media and go back to share media. Mm -hmm. So we actually right back to the MathCap days, right? In fact, a lot of the value proposition that Aruba has is, is actually how to apply layer four to seven technology to make sure that you have all the real life traffic over Wi-Fi, uh, get priority over the bulk traffic, like uh, you know your iPhone backup, right, yeah, over right. iCloud. So I, I, I think Bob should absolutely yeah. not <laughs> Well, he also made a lot of money on three colors, a whole other story, but <laughs> you know, Ethernet over the air is the right analogy, but getting there's hard. So the air interface is transceivers, if you will, yes. powered by radio frequency, which is uh, uh, power. You got to power, you got to drive the signal. That became a problem in the mid, mid 2000s because of interference, channel overlapping, these are the things. You guys solved a lot of that. Uh, for instance, you guys are powering the new Niners Levi Stadium, right. which has massive Wi-Fi. They're running replays to phones, six seconds off the off the camera. I mean, it's incredibly profound. How? What did you guys do? To, what was the breakthrough? And again, right. this is the new normal, right? right, right so right, massive absolutely. traffic, yes. over overlapping subnets, if you will. How does that all come together? Well, and all what's your coming, vision? All coming together when we start saying that the network have for 30 years now been run with this famous OSI seven layer model, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you're on a transition layer, you transmit. If you're on a network layer, you route, and if application layer, you stay. Uh, but, but the network is getting to a point 
uh, when, when the, the Ethernet packet is flying over the air, you have to break that. You have to say that application has to inference the transmission. You have to break that loop, and, and that is really a form of software-defined network, if you, if you will. And in a 49ers uh, stadium, one of the breakthrough is we've basically saying that you have to let the network traffic path in the application drive the transmission priority and also to solve the high density heterogeneous multimedia uh, problem and that is really uh, a, sim um, a symbolic of the next generation yeah. uh, wireless it's, me it's media so it touches the consumer but I want to get down into the details on how hard it is. Explain and, and, and compare and contrast today versus yesterday. How hard it is on little things like access method because when you talk about an employee at office, I mean, you got SSL, we got sniffers in the air, I can run you know, a packet sniffer and through the air and go poach passwords at the cafe. That was years ago. What has happened with security? Because that, again, That's was a, a big concern. I go do my work at the local cafe on you know, Palo Alto, and all of a sudden it's open access, and my password's flying, my bank. So what's happening on that front? So, so I think what's happening that front, if you look at network security, was traditionally built on the so-called concept of VLAN, a virtual mm -hmm. LAN, right? And, and, and the concept of VLAN is uh, to support primary client server Net, uh, networking with the client on the desktop and the server somewhere in the building. Uh, and, and you put a big firewall around the building and so when you occasion on the other side, you use VPN to go back in. But nowadays the server is flying out of the building to the cloud, the, 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 the client is hardly at the desk, even when you are in the building, your traffic is not going through the port in the desk, right? So the traditional security based on port, based on perimeter, has to be changed into a persona-centric mobility contact centric, location centric kind of overlay. And I think fundamentally the whole so-called BYOD uh, management has to do with uh, basically identify secure boundary that is based on a mobility context rather than a physical port. This is a paradigm shift. What you just Absolutely. said is a paradigm shift. Old way perimeter, guy at the door, don't let anyone in, credentials, password, that's gone. That's going to be moving away, not gone, but yeah, the, yeah, in the new paradigm, it has to go it's away. Not a, it's not enough anymore. Yeah, because you build the moat and the castle and somebody, now it's all helicopter and parachute. The queen right? wants to leave <laughs> the castle. Yeah. Right. They're right. dropping in through the API <laughs> notification yeah. from the air interface right. called wireless. No, okay, that's good, so this is all changing. So what's the HP synergy? So obviously you, you talk to HP, you dance a little bit, you know, they got the big dough, they throw the big check, but they're buying you for a reason. Where's the synergies, where's the strategic value for HP? So first of all, we talk about Aruba uh, as an asset. We have a, a good set of technology, we have a good brand, but most importantly, we have a good, very good set of customers. We uh, sometimes furiously call the airheads. Um, if, if you look at it, uh, the industry has been populated with people who have learned in the last two decades how to transform in a, from the a so-called uh, SNA architecture from the old days to TCP IP based router switch uh, based networking. Now that is the base. From there, we have trained up a whole set of user community that is focusing on the, the kind of the black magic of, uh, uh, of designing uh, high density uh, wireless network, um, um, mobile device management, and a new way of uh, doing user-centric security. So this airhead community is, is becoming a very strong advocate of uh, change or transformation in the, in the industry. Uh, so uh, the combination uh, with Aruba and HP is, as I mentioned early on, Aruba is having all this mobile uh, overlay uh, software and the wireless network and uh, to transform into a wireless first network, you actually need very good software-defined uh, wire component in the back end. The back end is becoming thinner, faster, and smarter. And the combination of HP networking switches and Aruba wireless, uh, it give you that portfolio. But more and more, our customers saying that, gee, there's too much technology, I would rather have this yeah. delivered to me as a service. You and HP's service organization is just I mean, I could just fantasize right now, me, you, and Meg are on a whiteboard. Hey, I got NFV running across the telco with the gigabit airheads to the te Tesla powering the nav system. So again, that's the fantasy. I mean, Teslas right now have all the telemetry data in the car going 70 miles an hour down Route 101. How does that fit in? How does that scenario fit in with Aruba? Or does it? Is it going to backdoor in through an NFV the, kind of thing? The, the way to summarize um, uh, what we have talked about so far is you need stable air for gigabit and you need secure air to make sure you now uh, you know uh, understand where the traffic is coming from. The next layer is smart air. Uh, we talk about the uh, the layer four to seven technology, mm -hmm. and and what you need is to constantly 
visualize uh, what is in the air, and, and that coupled with location-based technology is really uh, helping to bring the whole uh, mobile air, uh, the, the infrastructure to the next level. Dominic, share some insight to the folks watching around blanket coverage. I mean, that's a term used in the airhead world. You know, you, uh, LTE and, and, and uh, all the telcos have, you know, obviously it's the cell, cellular technology. It's large geographic areas, which has a certain frequency attributes. Wi-Fi has always been small, cafe-based. Mm -hmm. Centrino, you mentioned the early days chips, but yep. now that's gotten bigger. So to drive your car down the street <laughs> and moving between geographies, what's the blanket coverage or what's the coverage look like for the future of the air network and is it, Topology based? Right. Is it technology? How does the packets so, work? So, so I, um, I have a personal view that um, for over a wide array network and over roaming speed of uh, faster than like uh, 10, 15 miles per hour, uh, to get a coverage for a network like that with good roaming, you need the license band technology because you ne you need the economics and the scales to build out a coverage like that. But the moment you get down to a more localized uh, situation. Uh, or lower speed, uh, I, I think the unlicensed technology is going to have advantage because for bit by bit, bite by bite, that uh, the end-to-end -end transmission is not only fast, much more cost effective. And uh, unlike everything else, when you are unlicensed and open market, innovation is going to happen a lot and, faster. And that's a subnet, basically. You're talking about yes. a subnet, yes. licensed top, back, licensed to coax, and he yeah, wi I, the <laughs> I think that it's fair to say, uh, I think it used to be uh, the world is divided into wide area network WAN and local area network LAN. Think about LAN will become unlicensed yeah. and WAN is licensed. What That's kind of the What about competition? Um, yeah. You got a dominant player, uh, 60, 70% market share yes, player. Yes. Can HP change that dynamic? Yes, I, I think, um, uh, our biggest competitor obviously come from the uh, positional strain of uh, wire access infrastructure and the, the necessary, uh, their approach is to use wireless as an extension of that wire port for various reasons. We come in Aruba uh, with a kind of open ground and we so we come in from basically instead of core out, we come in access in and from our point of view from day one our network architecture is mobility-based, user-centric, rather than core and, and port-based centric. And that will remain to be the competitive dynamics. Well, Dominic, great to have you on theCUBE. Congratulations, I know you guys are a big power Levi Stadium's venue next over there. Has a really, have done a really amazing job from the ground up. They built an amazing set of technology. You want to comment at all on the Levi Stadium where the 49ers are? Just share with the folks, it's a nice little lifestyle real life example of Wi-Fi right. in an I awesome think, tech stadium. I think that in, that is an area that uh, I mentioned smart air early on that is taking smart air to the extreme in the sense that the Wi-Fi in that stadium is no longer passive, it's interactive. It knows when you arrive, it knows who you are, it knows where you sit it. Uh, if you want to go somewhere else, it can show you a map, you can order beer and hot dog in your seat. If you want to use the facility, you can use the air, the air to check whether the, there's a queue and so on. And and that is the ultimate of what you can do to a network when the network can talk back. And it's mission critical. I mean, I can get a hat delivered in six minutes, I can get some food, I can get my parking, I can know where my friends are, I get replays in six minutes. That's, that's a comprehensive uh, solution that Venue Next put together. That has to have a network that's totally mission critical. Th is that what you guys have delivered? Th that's absolutely uh, the, the, the gold standard for, I think, all uh, forward-looking, high-density, mobile-first environment uh, venue, and, and uh, uh, we're very, very uh, lucky and feel prestige to, uh, to uh, work with uh, the yeah. owner of the stadium and the venue next. Uh, that, the, that's the, the consumer of the future experience across for everybody. I mean, it's uh, not absolutely. just a well, use case now, it's NFL, they got the big bucks, but uh, <laughs> yeah, owner how, said uh, Absolutely, how to use your infrastructure, interact with your customer to increase uh, consumption experience, increase uh, customer loyalty, and increase your venue owner's wallet share. And well, why not? I love that term, interactive wireless. Uh, Persona-based overlay is the future. I totally think it's a paradigm shift that's going to happen quick. Those out front will be big winner. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Again, a success, so I, you guys did a great job with Aruba. Thank you. Uh, from the founding to exit, and now here at HP Innovating Continuing. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Join the conversation, hpdiscover.social or crowdchat.net. Of course, go to siliconangle.tv and go to the hashtag hpdiscover to join the conversation. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>